Hey guys, I'm here today in my home setup uh, and I wanted to talk to you a little bit more about uh, the Cine Reflect Lighting System or CRLS, uh, which is a series of uh, different size reflectors and qualities of reflectors uh, that I've been using um, quite extensively in my work in the last uh, year and a half, two years. Uh, in that same time, I've seen a growing uh, interest in the system from other uh, filmmakers and cinematographers and image makers out there and I've had a lot of people uh, message me directly asking me about the system and uh, wondering how it works and how maybe they can utilize it as well. So I wanted to take the opportunity to uh, shoot a little bit of content uh, and start talking about this system uh, some more. Uh, this video is not meant to be a super comprehensive know everything about it but uh, as time goes on, hopefully I'll be uh, making a couple more videos and, and showing you um, kind of what I've learned about the system so far and my uh, continuing uh, journey and evolution uh, as I discover new things. So we're here today with a little bit of a tabletop setup. Um, I do a lot of tabletop food work personally uh, and I thought this would be a great way to start uh, in terms of a demonstration. I know a lot of people out there don't do tabletop and are more interested in maybe how the system applies to narrative filmmaking and narrative-like setups. Um, but um, as we are sort of in quarantine at the moment uh, and I'm sort of stuck at home with limited resources, I thought this was uh, a great way to start because it's accessible. And despite the fact that it's not a narrative setup, the application of the reflectors, the mechanical application of the reflectors is really no different whether you're shooting tabletop or whether you're shooting uh, something more narrative or fiction driven. Um, the application and the usage of the reflectors and how you go about it is still the same. And inevitably the, uh, the goal of lighting is still the same. You're still sort of pursuing a creative endeavor um, and using uh, these reflectors as a paintbrush as you would any other lighting tool to achieve what you're trying to do. So just as a brief overview of, of uh, today's setup, so right now we have an overhead camera uh, shooting our little tabletop setup here. So we've just got a, a bowl of uh, walnuts and two apples on a board, uh, pretty straightforward. Um, it's sort of rigged, kind of tilted overhead in a bird's eye. This is a FS7. Uh, with a Fujinon MK 18-55 lens, uh, currently at uh, 5.6 on the lens. Um, to my left here, I've got a, uh, just a piece of shower curtain diffusion. This is a magic cloth diffusion, and um, right behind it is a DMG mini mix uh, dialed to 8,500 Kelvin. So I've got this kind of cooler blue fill light. Uh, in regards to tabletop specifically, I like to sort of start this way. I like to sort of have a nice, big, broad, soft fill source, um, kind of mimicking a little bit of like a window sort of setup. If you're doing, if you're sort of looking to achieve sort of a similar setup here, uh, this, you know, this can be sort of whatever choice of diffusion you want. This can be kind of whatever size you want. Uh, and as far as the fixture behind it, again, um, you can sort of pick, pick and choose what you like. To my right here, I have an Aperture 300D uh, with the spotlight attachment, which is basically like a Leco ellipsoidal attachment uh, with a 26 degree barrel. Uh, that kind of has been my choice uh, lighting tool uh, when doing tabletop. And I'll sort of get into specifically why I like this fixture and demonstrate sort of how it works. Uh, in relation to the reflectors. And so again, yeah, this is, this is sort of the starting point. Um, and so from here, I'll sort of once I've, um, I've got the fill in and, and the frame is good, I'll start sort of with my first um, stroke, my first brush stroke uh, with the reflectors. So um, the system comes in uh, four different flavors of reflectors. So you have a number one through number four, uh, number one being uh, your hardest reflector, which is basically like, almost like a mirror. So you got like kind of a mirror-like surface. And then it goes sort of down from there in terms of level of uh, softness. Or a better way to look at it is uh, uh, diffusion or, or even more specifically spread. So your one is going to be like a mirror, which is going to be a very hard quality light with not a lot of spread. And as you go to number two, number three, number four, uh, the light will get uh, 
will start to spread more and, and diffuse more. The reflectors come in four different sizes, so 7x7, 15x15, 25x25, and 50x50, all in centimeters, so it's all a metric system, as well as actually meter by meter, uh, the, the really big boys. Um, for tabletop work, I am typically using 7x7 seven seven and 15x15, 15 15, uh, only because the scale of what I'm shooting is relatively small, and what I'm always looking to do uh, is to create smaller splashes of light and to create sort of zones of light. And so uh, I typically s stay away from the larger reflectors, which would give me kind of a broader swath of light. Um, I'd rather, and which is totally fine, you can, it's just really just a creative choice. Uh, but for me, I'm looking to do smaller swaths um, or smaller hits of light as opposed to one giant swath. Uh, and so that's why I tend to lean on the 15 uh, by 15s and the 7 by 7s for tabletop. Again, if you're shooting narrative stuff, you're shooting people, you're shooting, you know, something with more scale, you're in, in a, you know, in a room, you're in, you know, you're shooting characters, uh, you can, all of this is sort of scalable. So you would probably go up maybe in size of the reflectors, which is going to change your spread of light. So in this scenario, I would start with, um, I generally am starting with my biggest stroke first. So um, the reflectors do come in these, um, or rather the, you can get these bags for the reflectors. I like this because they, I, I treat this as a scrim bag. So I just hang it off the, hang it off the stand. Uh, and inside is, are the four reflectors. This is the 15 by 15 size. So you can sort of see it marked here. Just by, I guess, of experience and, and using the system, I, I, I'll sort of lean to the number two and the number three uh, to start off with. So again, I'm looking for a sunnier, harder kind of quality generally. So I think for this, we'll start with a number two. So I'll just hang the bag off the stand here. I've got a, I've got a C stand here. Uh, there are multiple ways that you can sort of rig this stuff. Uh, I like C stands um, just because it's, clean and easy and, and linear in the way that it, uh, it, you manipulate the stand. So in terms of rigging, there is a, basically a dovetail on the back of the reflector and what they call a C wheel, which is your mounting. This goes in and you lock it. And then I have these six inch collars from Matthews, which is just like a extended baby pin with a piece on the back here that allows so that the pin won't slip through the grip head once it's in there. I put that in. And then what I'll normally do is I'll take this reflector and before I even mount it to the stand, I'll just manipulate the reflector and uh, sort of see where it is. Um, and this is the fastest way, fast way to do it. So basically put it in your hand first, find the light, and then when you're happy with it, lock it into the stand. I think if you try to put it in the stand immediately, um, you lose that sort of intuitiveness um, that the system gives you by just having it in your hands and manipulating it. So again, I have a 300D uh, to my right here that is shining this beam of light um, towards this camera actually. I like to sort of skim the light parallel to the fill source and uh, use the reflectors to kind of catch this beam as you can maybe kind of see on my hand, there's a beam of light here. So here I'm kind of out of the beam, out of the beam, and I sort of come into the beam here. You can sort of see how my left hand is kind of backlit here. So I'm still in the beam, I'm still in the beam, and then I'm kind of like out of the beam here. So the beam is here, and I've actually, I've actually narrowed it a little bit uh, with uh, the iris in the spotlight just to keep it off this camera. But normally I wish you would actually broaden it fully uh, so I, and I like this uh, lamp because of its broad uh, beam angle. So that allows me to fit more reflectors uh, into that beam. So that's why I've gone with the, uh, the 26 degree barrel. So yeah, so I'll basically take it, take the reflector and bring it into the light. And you can see on this other camera here, kind of what that's starting to do. So of course you can get really nutty and have it full in. And just really by moving the reflector in and out of the beam, you're controlling the level of intensity 
of the light. And so you can almost treat this as like a dimmer. So the more you come into the beam, the brighter it gets, and the more you pull it out, the less it is. And so, you know, I'm not it really, it doesn't take a lot to, to sort of get it, what's, get something nice. And, it, and again, there's so much subtlety, right? Just, I'm, I'm really just moving the reflector here like half an inch, and yet it's doing a tremendous amount of light here. And this is with the 300D actually at 80%. So I probably don't even really need to have it at 80%. I could probably even turn it down further. So we'll take it down to 60 even. But again, it doesn't, it's nice to have a little bit more because you can always bring the reflector uh, in and out of that beam to control the intensity. So, you know, so if I'm looking for something kind of sunny, you know, generally I, I like to have some, again, it depends on what the actual um, objects are, you know, what, what size the plate of food is, what it is, if it's product. And so that'll sort of always kind of start there. Hypothetically, if we say our hero here is the walnuts, I'll want to sort of hit that the most, but still, you're still looking kind of for a natural kind of effect, almost like it just kind of fell off the truck, if you will. Um, so I'll get, you know, maybe I'll do something like, maybe something like there is kind of nice. So like not full on the walnuts, but a little bit wasted that way. And again, you can come, you can come lower on it. So it's like more like reiki or you can come more kind of toppy in it. And again, I like to sort of use my hand here to kind of figure out where the beam is and then get this, get the reflector into that beam. And sometimes you have to tweak your lamp position a little bit. So I like, you know, I like something like that maybe. So once I'm kind of happy with that as a position with positioning with my hand, um, I'll kind of more or less take note of where the reflector is. So it's, you know, it's something like here. And then once I know that's more or less the position, I can pre-visualize where my C stand has to go. So in this case, I know I got to come up and, uh, and, and tip into, the, into this mount. So I'll put that down. I will come up on my reflector, or sorry, come up on my C stand. Again, just to remind myself where I want to be. I want to be something like something like here. Okay. So we'll do this, we'll do this, we'll do this, we'll do this. We'll undersling this a little bit. And once I've got it, once I'm back into roughly where I was before, I'll sort of put a good hand on the reflector, loosen up all the various axes of the C-stand, and then just kind of find it again. So we kind of like maybe something, something like that maybe. And then we'll lock everything back off again. And this is again, this is why I like C-stands because it's um, very linear and you can one by one lock off each um, axis of the C-stand. So the pan on the head, the tilt on the, on the, on the gobo on the, on the stand, and then same thing with the, uh, the gobo or grip head on the end of the arm. As opposed to like a, like a magic arm or something where once you loosen it, it's just free forming and everything like, and it's kind of just spinning everywhere. So yeah, so we'll like, you know, with something like that, maybe it's a little too intense. So I'll just, again, 
putting it into the beam intensifies it and pulling it out of the beam sort of dims, dims it down. So maybe that was a little, like there it's I think too much. So I'll just slide the C-stand back and then I'll get it. And then, so here it is again, off. And then we're coming on, we're coming on and there it is. So we like, we like that. So that's a good, I would say that's a really great first brush stroke. So after I've put in my first reflector and I've created my first sort of big stroke, bigger stroke of light, I'll generally start to look for like little smaller detail hits, you know, and that to me is kind of where um, the lighting gets really exciting. And I think, you know, you know, certainly myself and the people that I've worked with uh, emotionally get excited about the images that they're seeing. I think light is uh, way more interesting and exciting. And I guess you're emotionally connected to it. I think when it's, you know, not just one thing, you know, and then in, in truth, like lighting in the real world is kind of like that as well. It's not generally just one thing. You're getting a mix of, of maybe sunlight coming into a room. It's maybe skipping off something else and you're getting all these, you know, different textures everywhere. So um, that's kind of how I sort of approach it. So looking at here now, I'll look at the frame and to me right now, uh, the top uh, right part of the frame, the corner, maybe somewhere around here, uh, could use a little bit of uh, a little bit of love. And so I'll maybe take a smaller reflector. So I'll start with uh, a number one here. So I've got a seven seven centimeter by seven centimeter number one. And uh, again, I'll just take it in my hand before I even start to rig it, and I will kind of start to see what it's doing. And so it's quite intense here. Again, this is a number one. This, what we previously set up was a number two, 15 by 15. This is a one, number one, seven by seven. And we'll kind of look at kind of what that's doing. So again, way too much intensity. So I'll pull it back out of the beam to again, sort of treat it like a bit of a dimmer. So that's kind of interesting there little splash. And again, it's so easy just to like pan this around in your hand. And then it's, it's very small movements will, you know, give you a tremendous amount of control of where you want to put that, um, put that light. Like I'm, I'm literally moving my hand mere, you know, mere millimeters. Um, it also helps again that what I'm shooting, the scale of what I'm shooting is so small. Um, so it's a little more, uh, a little more pronounced, um, but you know, for this kind of work, especially just uh, tabletop work, it's tremendously, uh, you have a tremendous, tremendous amount of control over the quality. So say we like something like that, you know, maybe it's just a little kiss of something harder there. So again, I'll kind of look at where my hand is with the reflector and start to pre-visualize where I have to put my C-stand. So something like that. I'll grab another stand. So I know I kind of want to be up and over there a little bit. Put the reflector in my hand again and just remind myself where I wanted to be. So which was something, something in the lines of Somewhere in there. And again, once I actually have it in the stand, I can kind of manipulate it and refine it, but maybe something there. Oh, and actually I was mistaken. This is actually a number two. So that wasn't a number one, but it was doing what I needed it to. So once I have it in the rigging again, I'll go ahead, put a good solid hand on the reflector and start to loosen everything up again. So loosen, loosen the grip head and the, the tilt and the pan on the stand. And then as well as the, in this case, pan on the arm. And then looking at the monitor and my eyes as well, I'll sort of try to find Find it again. So 
So, you know, again, we don't wanna, we don't want to take away too much attention from the walnuts, but we want to just give that a little bit of a harder feel there. And then once I have, once I have these, some of these uh, axes locked off on the C-stand, I'll go ahead and just finesse it further. So maybe something like that. And actually, now that I look at it, maybe actually uh, the number two is too soft. And so just for the sake of argument, say I said it, but I'm like, okay, actually that's not, that's, it's too soft. What I can easily do then is go to the number, go back to a number one. And so, So you can see this is now me just placing the number one in front of where I have the number two rigged. And that's kind of a number one. So qu quite a bit harder, quite a bit more intense. Um, so oftentimes if you are looking to swap the diffusion, and again, it's as easy as just releasing it out of the C wheel and then just inserting the new reflector and you can see it's a little bit off aim now because it's way way less spread so you have to be a little bit more control so I'll have to take this again and then just okay so that's that's a little bit more interesting to me now it's it's a lot harder than the number two was. And again, I'm just, just ever, I'm just moving the reflector in this grip head a couple of millimeters. And I'm getting this tremendous amount of control of where I put this little slash of sunlight. So, you know, I kind of like how it feels falling off the board there a little bit. So maybe something, kiss, maybe something, maybe something there. Uh, maybe something there. And if I like if I like the direction, but maybe not necessarily the quality, you can also just just take it, take the C stand and just jiggle it more into the beam, and then just re-aim it. Yeah, so maybe something like something like that maybe is uh, a nice bit of quality there. So, and again, you can sort of spend all day kind of futzing around with this. Okay, and so, and again, really from there, I'll just sort of continue going forward, um, pa painting different things. So now it's maybe the apples need a bit of love. So I'll look at, I mean, I'll take a, Again, a seven by seven number three or number two, should I say? And I'll, you know, maybe, oh, maybe the apple, maybe the apples just need a little something, or maybe it needs, maybe it needs just a little kiss on the front there. So not, so, you know, really, uh, you'll approach this the same way like any light. So the more the reflector is up here, it'll be kind of toppier on the apple. And then if you want a little more sidey, you gotta bring the reflector lower like you would a lamp. So maybe the apple, maybe we give the apple just a little lift there. And actually just, 
It nicely sort of gets into the, 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 the napkin there as well. So something there. So same exercise, we'll get a C-stand. And probably come here. Until I... This can often be a a game of acrobatics. So here we go, that's sort of off, and that's me just lifting that top apple a little bit. And again, I'm, I'm just making the slightest movements with my hands here. I'm like moving this reflector millimeters, maybe half a centimeter. So that's off, and that's coming on. And when I'm happy with that, I'll carefully lock everything off. And then just double check I'm not blocking one, uh, one reflector with another. And so yeah, so that's just kind of basically how uh, I go about lighting tabletop. And again, uh, this really applies uh, to anything you're lighting. You're just taking these reflectors, you're placing it into a light source, um, and you're redirecting the light where you want it to be. Uh, and then making choices on size of reflector and, uh, and level, of, uh, level of diffusion. Um, so just to sort of re-illustrate what we did here today, uh, I'll go ahead and turn off the 300D. So this is basically just, uh, just the fill light and we'll turn on, we'll turn back on the light. And so that's what all our reflectors in. And then what I can do is just sort of show, well, I'll just slowly do my best to pan off what we basically set. So this was, uh, this was the number, this was the first thing we did, the 15 by number two. So panning that off. And then that will come back on slowly. So about there. And then we also put a little hard sun splash um, on our top right part of our frame. So this one's actually the trickiest to pan away just because of the way that I have my C-stand set, set. So I'll just try to cover that one. Oh, actually I lied, sorry. That, that is the, it's the number two that was hard. So that's our number one sun splash and that's slowly coming back on. So off. Coming back on, so maybe there, and then, and then we just had another number uh, two seven by seven hitting the top of that apple, which I can't really pan out anymore because it's kind of right up tucked up against my other C stand. But that's me just flashing it there with my hand. And actually, that's let's try this. Actually, that's probably better, so I don't block the uh, number one. So that's, that was, that's off and that's, that, that's on. All right guys, there you go, a little demo of the CRLS system and a little tabletop setup we had going on here today. Uh, definitely not the most comprehensive, but I really just wanted to show you very quickly uh, the manipulation uh, of the reflectors in a light source and what the resulting uh, images and light quality is on camera. So hopefully you got something out of it. I'll definitely be doing some more content shortly uh, with some more examples of the system. So definitely stay tuned. Thanks for watching. We'll see you soon.